Hey everyone, welcome back, and let's write some more neat code today. So today I'll solve the problem, shifting letters to. I don't think we've actually solved the first one, but I think this is actually a pretty interesting problem once you can actually like understand what they are asking of us. It took me a few minutes to kind of really make sure I understood everything. The idea here, first of all, is that we are given a string, let's call it S, of characters from lowercase a through z. In this example, it's a, b, c. And so the first thing before I even get into the problem is I want you to know that strings are bad. Strings are evil. I would even go as far as saying that strings are a conspiracy theory. We don't need strings. Arrays are always better than strings. So the first step of solving this problem efficiently is knowing that we don't need strings. So I'm actually just going to ignore the string aspect of this problem. I'm going to say that since we're dealing with lowercase a through z, I'm going to create a mapping of a is going to map to 0, z is going to map to 25, and then we can deal with an array. And at the end, we can just do the conversion and take the integers and convert it back into a string when we need to. I'll explain to you how to do this. It's not that difficult, but it makes the problem so much easier when you don't have to worry about strings, at least in Python. In some languages, I guess you could use like an array of characters and that might work, but I'm going to stick with integers. So ignore this up here. We actually have an array from 0, 1, and 2. These are the values in our array. And what we want to do in this problem is sort of run a simulation. We are given a bunch of shifts to perform and we want to perform them on our input array. So this is how an individual shift is going to work. So this one here is 0, 1, 0. First of all, these two, they tell us the left and right boundaries of our shift. So in this input array, you could say that this is index 0, this is index 1, this is index 2. And so we want to perform the shift on this sub array. So this part of the array, we want to perform a shift. The second, or rather the third part of this tells us the direction. Uh, zero tells us we want to sort of move to the left, or you could say the negative direction, and a positive one would have told us we want to move to the right, a positive direction. So what exactly does the shift mean? Well, it basically means that for each of these guys, since this is zero, we want to go in the negative direction. For each of these guys, we decrement it by one. So I'm going to perform the shift by doing this. I'm going to decrement this by one. It's negative one. I'm going to decrement this by one. It's zero. Okay, we have a problem. This is negative one. Our mapping was from lowercase a to z. In other words, from zero to 25. We're kind of out of bounds here. So let me show you how they want us to deal with that in this problem. Basically, 0 through 25 is going to be circular. So if you get to negative 1, that's basically like looping back around and being at 25. So how exactly do we handle that in terms of code, though? It seems like it get kind of messy because if we make this a negative 1, well, what if it was like a negative 3 or even more negative? Or perhaps what if we went uh, out of bounds the other direction? What if we made our number too big? We made something like 26 or 27 or 28. How do you handle something like that? Well, in most languages, this is the way to handle that. You would take this number and to make sure that we don't go like in the negative direction, most languages can't handle that super easily. So you would just take that and add to it the number 26, the number 26, because that's like the size of our set. And so negative one plus 26 is going to be 25. And then that new number, you would always mod it by 26, again, the length of our character set to make sure that it's always going to be somewhere between zero through 25. So if you take 25 and mod it by 26, there is no remainder. Well, I guess that's not quite true. Basically, uh, it would just be 25. So why did I do these two steps? Well, the reason we add 26 is because we always want that number to be positive. So that's where the plus 26 came from. The mod 26, it comes from the fact that we always want that number then to be in that range. We don't want it to be too big because imagine if I had like an 8 over here and then I added 26 to it, then I'm going to get something like 34. Well, then if I mod it by 26, I think I'm going to get like 8. And then we can then say that 8 is a valid character in our current set. Just to make it like crystal clear what I'm trying to say, 
imagine we have like A, B, C, D, all the way up until Z, then you can kind of imagine that we then restart. We have A, B, C, and then we just keep going again all the way to Z. So we add 26 to make sure our number is somewhere like here. And then if we're too big, we'll mod it by 26 to bring it back here, which is somewhere from zero to 25. So that's what the problem basically wants us to do. So we ran the first shift here. I'll run the other two shifts. So this one is a shift of one, two, and one. So that means this subarray, and this time it's positive one. So we actually wanna to add to it. So this will now be set to one. This will be set to three. And then the last shift is from zero to two. So the entire array, and we wanna shift each by one in the positive direction. So um, this is what our current array is. The new one I'll draw down here is going to be a plus one here. That should be zero, or sorry, it was a 25 earlier. And so doing a plus one will bring it to 26. And then we'll mod that by 26, which will bring us back to zero. So you can see that technically the math works out the same way. And then here plus one, it'll be two. Here plus one, it'll be four. So now we can take this and convert it back to a string because we did all of the shifts. And so zero will map to uh, lowercase a, two will map to lowercase c, four will map to lowercase e. And you can see that is indeed the expected result for this example. So is the problem really this easy? Because I just ran the simulation. Technically, this is a working solution. What's gonna be the time complexity of it though? Let's think about that. Well, for each of the shifts, we might end up going over the entire input array, right? We're either gonna do a plus one or a minus one for every single position. I know this thing has gotten pretty messy, so sorry about that. But that's one shift. So one shift could be O of N. How many shifts are there? Well, the length of that array is gonna be not necessarily the same as the length of the input string, so we can call that M. So this is gonna be the overall time complexity of doing the simulation solution. It's a working solution, but my question is, can we do better? Do we actually have to run the simulation? Are there any sort of shortcuts we can take? And the answer is yes. It's gonna involve the idea of prefixes, and I'll clean up this part so we can get into that now. Let's say I have an input like this one, and I wanna perform some arbitrary shift. So maybe on this subarray, or on uh, this subarray, or on uh, this subarray. And whether we're doing a plus one shift or a minus one shift doesn't matter too much. But do I really have to do the entire shift? Actually, let me make this example a little bit bigger to make it more clear. If I'm performing this shift, isn't there a way for us to sort of mark it? Because the shifts are always gonna be plus one or minus one. Well, it's a little tricky to do that. If I was trying to do something like this, I'm gonna create an array here. It's gonna be exactly one bigger than the input because what I would want to try is something like this. So suppose this is the shift that I'm performing, or maybe this is the shift. And let's say it's a plus one shift. It'd be nice if I could just put a plus one over here and use this sort of as like a prefix uh, diff. So I know like this one over here tells me that everything before it in the input is gonna have a plus one applied to it. It would be really convenient if we could do that. Unfortunately, some of the shifts such as this one are not necessarily gonna start at the beginning. So it's not enough to do that. But hold on a second. What if I do a combination? What if I do two prefixes? Well, not two different like prefix arrays, but what if I do two updates to this prefix array? I put the one here, the plus one, which tells me everything here, all these guys are gonna have a plus one applied to them. But I also then put a negative one over here, the reason it's in this spot is because that's the beginning of like the shift that we performed. And I want this negative one to be applied to everything that came before it, which is this portion. So conceptually, that does seem like it would work. Like we are storing enough information in this array to accomplish that. So it takes an O of one operation to insert two values into this array, provided we know the indexes. Like this is our left, this is our right of the shift, and we go to the right plus one spot and add that. We go to the left spot and we do that. Okay, but then how would you actually use these when the time comes to actually update the array? 
we're not actually doing the simulation immediately, we're just storing the values here so that then afterwards we can update the array. But how exactly would we do that with this? Well, assume that these are all zeros here. We could do something like this where we go through here in reverse order, and then we keep track of the total diff. Let's say it starts at zero. So I'm over here. I see a one. I add to my diff a one. Now I'm over here before I take this value and add it to my diff. It's zero, so it's not going to change anything. But before I do that, I'm going to take the current value that I have here, which tells me the sum of everything that came over here, and I'm going to apply it to the current value. So that's going to say over here, we can replace it with a six now. Like we added one to it. I know this is kind of hard to read. I'm sorry. Um, but now we can take this and add it here. Nothing's going to change. So then we'll add the plus one here as well. This is going to be a five. Same thing over here. We're going to add the plus one. It's going to be a four now. And now after we do that update, we're going to take this negative one, add it over here. So now the diff is going to go back down to zero. And now that zero can be applied over here, meaning that this guy isn't going to change at all, which is exactly what we wanted in the first place. So this guy will stay a one and this guy will stay a zero. And so this is the way to do it. Not only does this work for a single shift, but you can imagine had we performed multiple shifts. Let me kind of give you a brief example of that. Uh, suppose we perform this shift and we perform this shift. So I'm just going to keep it simple and just have two shifts for now. So this shift over here is going to tell me, uh, assuming it's like a plus a one shift, and let's say this is a plus one shift as well. You can imagine that if they were negative, it would also work. If you don't believe me, you can try uh, drawing it out yourself. I highly encourage you to do that. But uh, for this shift, we're going to put a plus one over here since that is the right plus one. And then over here, we're going to put a minus one because we don't want that plus one to be applied to these guys. So we counteract it with this. And same thing over here. We're now going to put a plus one over here, actually. So it's going to override this one and it's going to end up making this a zero, uh, sort of badly drawn. OK, that's better. Actually, sorry, uh, the plus one for here should have gone over there. So uh, very important to not make that mistake. So we'll put a plus one over there. And then for here, we'll put a little negative one. And then these two will stay zero. So now how is the dry run going to work? Well, still iterating from right to left, we'll now have a one. So I'll just keep track of that down here. So then to this, a plus one will be applied. It'll be six. This is zero, so we don't change. We're here. It's four. We applied the plus one. It'll be five. We take this and now we have a plus two. We take the plus two and we apply it over here. So this will be five. And let's think about that for a second. Does that make sense? Should this have been incremented by two? Yes, because when we performed this shift, everything in here got incremented by one. When we performed this shift, everything in here got incremented by one. So of course, this guy should have been incremented by two. These are incremented by one, and this is also incremented by one. It makes sense because now we're taking this negative one and adding it here, bringing us down to one. So thus the delta for this is gonna be one. It's gonna be two. We're gonna take the negative one, apply it here. It's uh, back down to zero. So finally, when we're here, there is no shift applied to this guy. It stays zero. Kind of a clever approach, isn't it? I would say this is definitely a tricky problem for a medium prefix problem, but I had some fun with it. Hopefully you did too. There's a few passes that we're going to go through, but you can see that it's still a linear time solution and linear space as well. So let's code it up. I don't know if this is helpful for anyone, but sometimes people ask, like, what was your thought process? This is like the exact thought process that I went to for solving this problem. And I assume most of you guys who solved this one probably had the same thought process, but honestly, I'd be interested in hearing how you guys think about these. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that prefix diff array I was talking about. It's initially going to be all zeros. It's going to be of length of the string plus one. And then we're going to go through all the shifts and we're not going to perform the simulation. I actually did write the code for the simulation, so I guess I might as well just quickly show it to you right now. This is the code for the simulation. I know there's some like list comprehension and ASCII value stuff going on, but you can see that we would just go over all the shifts, apply the shifts to the entire range from left to right, and then at the end we would just convert those integers back into a string. I don't know if this is helpful for you, but this solution is time limit exceeded. So that's why we are going to be doing the more optimal solution right now. We're going to go over all the shifts. We're going to unpack it because each shift has three values in it, left, right, and the difference. So just like that. And what we want to do in our prefix diff array at right plus one, we want to add one to it if the difference is positive. 
Otherwise, if the difference was zero, we wanna add negative one to it. So just doing a little ternary operator here in Python, you could probably do that in your own language as well, or you could write an if statement if you prefer to do it that way. Um, and then on the left, we're gonna do kind of the opposite. So here, we're gonna do left. We're not doing left plus one for kind of reasons I talked about in the drawing explanation. And here, we're going to add to it negative one if the difference was positive. Otherwise, we're gonna add positive one. So this is just to counteract this prefix diff so that it's not applied to everything that came before the left index. So now that we have that, we can get ready to iterate over this thing in reverse order. So I'm gonna do this for i in range, length of, I could say length of prefix diff, or I could also say length of s plus one. This is kind of shorter, so maybe I'll keep it this way, but I think for some people it might be more readable if I actually am explicit with what I'm doing, so I'll do that, I guess. And through this, we wanna go in reverse order, so it's getting kind of long here, but basically just going over all indexes of this in reverse order. And so what we wanna do is keep track of the diff. I'll initialize that to zero, and every time we're gonna take the current value in prefix diff and add to it to the current diff. And then we wanna apply this diff to the input string s. Unfortunately, we can't do it like this. Strings are immutable in most languages, including Python. So first I'm gonna do some conversions. I'm gonna convert that into an array like this. Python makes it relatively easy with list comprehension. So I'm gonna go through every character in S creating a string. And then I'm gonna take the ASCII value of that character and subtract from it the ASCII value of lowercase a. This will create the mapping from zero to 25 I was talking about. Because if this was lowercase a, that would obviously map to zero. If this was z, uh, this would map to 25 because ASCII values are consecutive. By the way, if you're not familiar with like list comprehension and you wanna learn some of these Python tips and tricks, I do have a pretty good uh, Python for coding interviews course, has some interactive lessons as well. So this is the sort of result, so I'll call it that. It's the result array, and then eventually at the end, after we've done all the updates to it, we wanna be able to convert it back into a string, or first we should probably create an array of characters. So once again, we'll do list comprehension. I'll say for the number in the result, and then for each number, I wanna get it back into a character. So I'll get the ASCII value of lowercase a, add to it uh, the number n. So now this will be the ASCII value of the character that we want. We can take an ASCII value and turn it into a actual character like this in Python. And so this is the array of characters now. I'll call that s, and then we want to turn it into a string in Python. You can do this, use empty string as the delimiter, and then join all the substrings together. Believe it or not, there's just one line of code left for us to write. It's this part in the loop. We have the diff, but now we actually wanna apply it to the current position. But we're not actually applying it to index i, because remember, this is gonna be one less than the length of the prefix diff. That was exactly one bigger. So actually, we want to apply it to the position at i, minus one. What exactly do we wanna do? Are we really just gonna do something like this, apply the diff? almost, but we would also then in Python want to mod it by a 26. So I'm actually gonna write it like this, diff plus result, the value that's already there. And then this, we then want to mod it by 26. So this is the last line of code. I'll run this for you now. And you can see here it works, it's pretty efficient, but before you try to implement this in a different language like Java, remember that Python, the way it handles uh, modding negative values is very unique. In most languages, you'll probably need to do something like this. Here, put a plus 26 and it should work out. I'll show you that this also actually works out in Python as well, so just to prove it to you, let me run it. And uh, over here you can see, yep, it works just as well. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io for a lot more, always adding new content to it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.